Welcome UCL fans to the Week 7 Review and Preview for the United Championship League. I'm Nintendo Fanatic 64 and I have crunched the numbers and I have come up with what I believe is a fair and accurate ranking system for the UCL. Now I would like to mention, as I do every week, I am in no way affiliated with the UCL or any of its coaches, but of course if any of them are watching and are approving of this, go ahead and leave a thumbs up rating, or if you just enjoy the video yourself, go ahead and leave it a like and let me know in the comment section if you agree or disagree with any any of my rankings or who, what team you are rooting for this season. Now before I get into the actual rankings, I'm going to go ahead and review all eight matches that took place over this last weekend. So starting off, we have the Pittsburgh Pichus, who have a record of 3-3 three and three going into this week, taking on the St. Louis Rampardos, whose record is 5-1. and one. And we have a 2-0 victory for the St. Louis Rampardos. MVPs for St. Louis go to Vaporeon and Crobat, both of which had two knockouts this week. However, I do also have an honorable mention to Entei from uh, the Pittsburgh Pichus, who managed to get four knockouts more than any other Pokemon on the rosters this week. Uh, up next, we have the Bronx Baratics, who are undefeated with a perfect 6-0 record, taking on the New York Mankeys, who are 3-3 three three going into this week. And we had a narrow 1-0 victory for the New York Mankeys. That's right, the New York Mankeys, for the second week in a row, have taken on the undefeated team and won. MVP for New York went to Jolteon with three knockouts this week. Up next, we have the Carolina Keldeos, with a record of 2-4, and four, taking on the Manchester Magnazones, who unfortunately have not gotten a win this season, and record is 0-6. And, and this was a big 6-0 victory for the Carolina Keldeos. MVP for Carolina goes to Zygarde, who swept the Manchester Magnazones and actually knocked out all six Pokemon this week. Up next, we have the also never won a match team of the South Beach Slow Kings, 0-6 for their record, taking on the Philadelphia Feraligators, whose record stands at 3-3. And it was a 2-0 victory that went to the Philadelphia Feraligators. MVP for Philadelphia goes to Garchomp, who managed to get three knockouts this week. Up next, we have the Tulsa Talonflames, whose record is 4-2, taking on the Bristol City Blaziken, whose record is 2-4. And, and it was a 5-0 victory that went to the Tulsa Talonflames. The MVP for Tulsa will go to the Mega Houndoom and the Ferrothorn this week, both of which managed to get two knockouts. Up next, we have the Long Island Reggie Rockies, whose record is at 4-2, taking on the Newcastle Nido Kings, whose record is also 4-2. And it was a 3-0 victory that went to the Newcastle Nido Kings. MVP for the Newcastle went to the Scrafty, who managed to get three knockouts this week. Up next, we have the Tucson Terrakions, whose record is 5-1, and one, taking on the Toronto Tokakis, whose record is 2-4. and four. And in a narrow 1-0 victory went to the Tucson Terrakions. MVP for Tucson went to Gengar, who managed to get three knockouts this week. And then the final match of the week, we have the Grand Canyon Greninjas, whose record is 1-5, taking on the Durham Dredaguns, whose record is 4-2. And, and it was a 2-0 victory for the Durham Dredaguns. MVP for Durham goes to Drapion, who managed to get 5 knockouts this week. So that does it for the review section of this. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to the rankings. Now remember, I award a team one point for every Pokemon they knock out. If a Pokemon on the opponent's side faints due to either a self-destruct, um, a move that knocks themselves out, or recoil damage that took them out, they will not earn a point. And of course, every time a Pokemon is lost on a side, that team will lose a point. So, starting off at number 16, we have the Manchester Magnazones, whose record is now 0-7 and have a score of negative 31. So they have a long way to go if they want to try and make the playoffs this season. At number 15, we have the South Beach Slow Kings, also with a record of 0-7 and now have a score of negative 23. At number 14, we have the Grand Canyon Greninjas, whose record is 1-6 and they have a score of negative 13. At number 13, we have the Bristol City Blazikins, whose record is 2 and 5, and now have a score of negative 10. At number 12, we have the Toronto Tokakis, whose record is 2 and 5 now, and a score of negative 8. At number 11, we have the Carolina Keldeos, whose record is now 3 and 4, and a score of negative 7. 
At number 10, we have the Long Island Reggie Rockies, whose record is 4-3 and three and have a score of 0 now. At number nine, we have the Pittsburgh Pichus, whose record is three and four and a record and a score of plus two. At number eight, we have the Philadelphia Four Alligators, whose record is four and three and have a score of four. At number seven, we have the New York Mankeys, with a record of four and three and a score of four. At number six, we have the Newcastle Nido Kings, with a record of five and two and a score of nine. At number five, we have the Tulsa Talon Flames with a record of five and two and a score of nine. At number four, we have the Bronx Bear Ticks who have a record of six and one and a score of 11. At number three, we have the Tucson Terrakions with a record of six and one and a score of 11 as well. At number two, we have the Durham Drudaguns who have a record of five and two and a score of 12. And then finally, ranked number one this week for the second week in a row, in my opinion, is the St. Louis Rampardos with a record of 6-1 and one and a score of 16. So that will do it for this week's review and ranking. I will probably have another video up shortly after this one, uh, probably tomorrow with my current predictions for playoffs. This does mark the unofficial midway season as there are only eight more weeks left to go, and it's pretty much coming clear who is probably going to be in the playoffs but it is still anyone's game i would say anyone in the top seven rankings right now have a good chance at making the playoffs now i'm not saying anyone who is ranked below that doesn't stand a chance i just think that they would have a long way to get to for it but again that will be a video for another time let me know again what you thought of my rankings but in the comment section if you did enjoy them please leave this a rating a thumbs up and then let me know of course who you're rooting for this season and until next time i will see you all later